All right, Patrick, as we finish week seven, going on to week eight, we've got some pitchers who did pretty well last week uh, to talk about. Namely one, Mr. Shelby Miller. It's Miller time in St. Louis. Apparently. Can't be stopped. Even though they play at Bush Stadium. <laughs> um, you know, I didn't really realize it. I didn't realize what a great prospect he was Until before last year. he imploded in the minor leagues. Um, and he, he's that guy now. Yes, he, he turned into everything we always expected him to be. Uh, two seasons ago, uh, Keith Law had him ranked inside of his top five of overall baseball prospects, and then he hit these troubles last year. He lost his command, and it, he just walked everyone in the ballpark. Uh, not walking anybody now. No, no, but now it's completely swung the other way. That yeah. leads me to believe that there might be a little bit of regression coming where he's now one of the best. He went from one of the worst controlled pitchers in the minor leagues to one of the best in the major leagues. So it seems like there's probably some sort of happy well, There's going to have to be some regression. He's pitching to a whip of less than .9. I mean, yeah. just... Guys don't do that. No. He's not Pedro Martinez. Pedro didn't do that, I don't think. No, and with other things you have to look at, I mean, his BABIP, uh, batting average of balls in play, is not, it's low, but it's not crazy low. It's 246. Uh, I mean, that number, it could sustain there. Chances are it doesn't. Uh, he's probably more off in the 270 range, so you can expect that to swing back a little bit the other way. And the one thing I will say is his field independent of pitching, his FIP, the ERA predictor right now is at 238, which is still a fantastic number. Right. Uh, but he's outperforming that by you know, almost a full run, actually over a full run at this point. So the ERA is going to come back up, but still long term, I, I think he's a great pitcher. The only thing I worry about is maybe he's on a pitch count. We haven't heard it yet, but... All the young guys are in pitch cast. The, the interesting thing here is when he needs an out... He gets he it. strikes you out. He's got 57 strikeouts and less than 52 innings. So, um, and to have only 12 walks on the air is... is I'm not going to say it's Cliff Lee-like, but... <laughs> it's it's close it's to it. It's a right-handed Cliff Lee-like for a 22-year-old or however old he is. Yeah, it's not bad. He's, he's just under a 5-to-1 strikeout-to-walk ratio. The one number that does leap off the page at me, though, seven, 87% strand rate. That's just a number that's unsustainable. That's People don't do that. So that number is going to come down. And you'll see the runs come. He's going to hit a rough patch. But overall, I, I, he's looking like a top 20 you know, pitcher. We, we came up with uh, the, the strain rate once before when we spoke about Clay Buckholz. Don't you think that he, the fact that he's stranding 87% Means he's uh, pitching and, and, well. Uh, that's where like Buckholz was too. Isn't that that's awesome? That's 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 not a negative. No, it's not a negative, but it's a number that just based on history has no chance of staying at that elevated number. It's, What's the normalized? The normalized rate is somewhere around seventy five percent. Good pitchers, your Verlander types in outlier seasons, except for yesterday. Except for yesterday, but that's the sort of thing where that number now regresses back right. to where it should be. Right. And the same thing's going to happen to Miller. That number should be if he has a great season. That number ends at eighty percent. So runs are on the way. Well, suppose you didn't have any of his stats yet, okay? The re we're talking this year, the rest of this year. Is it Miller time for you? Yeah, I would be highly investing in Shelby Miller. I, there's no reason not to. Even even if, let's say, he has a 1.5 ERA right now. Let's say he ends the year with a 3 ERA. Yeah. That means for the rest of the season, he's going to pitch to probably around a 3.7, 3.8. Not a bad ERA, not going not going to kill you. We've seen that his whip is fine. It's under 1. Now let's say that goes up to 1.1. 1 .1. That means for the rest of the year it's around 1.25. Not bad. But with his strikeout numbers, it's all worth it because he's striking out more than a batter in inning. It's just something pitchers don't do. And he seems like he's the type that can sustain that. John Lester. John Lester on pace to go 24-0. 6-0. <laughs> 50 strikeouts and 60 innings. Only 15 walks. 2.715 ERA and a whiff of just about one. Um, sustainable? Yes, surprisingly. Uh, even the advanced stats sort of back it up. I mean, he's pitch, he's outperforming his FIP and his XFIP just a little bit, but not by a significant margin, because that's going to happen either way to every pitcher. It just it will regress slowly towards that number. But even even so, his FIP is 3.21. If you finish the year with a 3.21 ERA, I think you'd be fine with that. Uh, I, I do think it is the one number that leapt out to me uh, when I was just sort of glancing over all of them is his home run to fly ball rate right now. It's at 7.5%. Uh, for his career, he's around 10%, and last year it was a disastrous, like 16%. So that's a number that probably goes back up. That tends to be a league average stat that merged, that goes back to a baseline of around 10 11%. So, I mean, he can outperform that number. It's just unlikely. So that's the only concern that I have for him, that and the unsustainable win total. He's not going to go 24-0. He's getting right. terrific run support right now. 
Yeah, I, I honestly, I'm aghast. I don't know what to say. I wasn't expecting this at all. No, not I, at all. I, I think he's a very good pitcher, but I'm thinking he's in the American League East. You know, he might do well with the wins and the um, and the things like that. But I didn't think the ERA and the WHIP was going to be there. I I, I viewed him more like an Andy Pettit thing, a, a yeah. great pitcher you want to have on your to win the game. But maybe not a great fantasy. Maybe not so much in fantasy. The one thing I will say, too, is that right now he's on pace for 240 innings pitched. It's a lot, especially in today's game. Uh, so you might see him get scaled back. Like He's already thrown a complete game. He's working deeper into games. I that's because, well, they don't like their bullpen. No, their bullpen's not great, and it's all banged up as well. But still, that's a lot of innings. That's a lot of wear and tear compared to what he pitched last year. I'm not paying him. I say throw him. <laughs> Fair enough. Hisashi Iwakuma. How are they doing the name? Very good. What do you think about Hisashi? Uh, I like him. I like him because he's still under the radar in the fact that people don't really buy into him being even like top 40 pitcher. They just when you Could see be it, under the radar with a name like Hisashi. Well, it can stand no, out. Well, yeah, but no one can say it, so everyone's too afraid to ask for him in trades if they're just talking one on one. One thing I will say, he had, currently has the lowest batting average of balls, balls in play of anyone in the majors, 209. So that's a number that's going to come up. Uh, his field independent and pitching is twice what it is his ERA, but it's because his ERA is so damn low. 1.8. Like, he's not going to finish the year at 1.8. He's a three ERA guy, a little bit above that. And we talked about strand rates with Shelby Miller. His, Iwakuma's, even higher, 89%. He, is this the year of the pitch? What's going on? Look at the, the people that we spoke about today. His whip is 0. <laughs> 0.78. What, what is this, like 1968 with Gibson? And maybe, they raised the, maybe, maybe they raised the mounds and they didn't tell us. It's crazy. It is. It's absolutely insane. So he's, if you can get someone to buy in on Iwakuma as a top 20 pitcher, yeah, you sell him. But I think he's still enough under the radar that you either hold him. He's still available in some leagues. He's not 100% owned, which blows my mind. Well, was he always a starting pitcher? No, he started last year as a reliever, and oh. then tran then he transformed into a starter. So uh, is he going to be on a pitch limit? Like no, 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 no. He came over from Japan. Yeah, but he, but he wasn't. He's, he's rubber.